the last episode of the Rise and Fall series, we left off talking about Squall, but I wanted to dive more in depth in characters as well as give more of a basis on the actual history of Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia, so from now on, I'll be titling this series as The History of Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia, where I pick a character to give a retrospective look on them and how well they fared in the game upon their initial release, to how well they were handling content during that time, as well as current content today, and newly look at the community feedback during each era to see what a difference it made and how the character changed over time. So grab a snack and some coffee and join me as we talk about the history of Final Fantasy VI main protagonist, the Esper, Tara Branford. So the initial release of Terra was rocky to say the least, but not in a bad way. She was first released during the Arc 1 Chapter 4 timeline, and you never think at first how different her skills were back then compared to how fast paced she is now. So for example, Meteor and Meltdown were both charge based attacks, meaning that on the first turn, Terra would simply charge up and gang Brave, and on your next turn, you'd be able to launch Meteor Plus. Now this is obviously very slow, but the game itself back then was slower in its gang state than it is today. You'd probably think that her 15 or 35 CP weapons helped with this little setback, but they actually kept her like this until the second Crystal Awakening batch, where she received her extension skills, and this dropped the state of her charged abilities, and now she can launch her plus version skills right away. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So upon her Crystal Awakening, Terra was called the new Meta Queen, and breaking down her extended skills, <laughs> You'll see why. Her extended meltdown ability now increases Terra's Brave by 75% of her attack, then by 50%, then by another 20% before launching an HP attack. That's honestly insane for this time, thinking about this. She also grants herself a 40% attack up buff for 4 turns, and a 60% max Brave up buff with a 40% Brave regen of her initial Brave for 4 turns. The best part about this, as you can see, is that the charge or chant is now gone. Her extended meteor ability is now a 15 hit magic brave plus HP attack with a 270% damage output. This also increases Terra's brave based on 75% of her attack and grants Terra a 30% attack up for 4 turns and a small speed up buff for 6 turns, which this also inflicts a speed down to an enemy hit for 2 turns. Basically, the new meta was arriving was faster paced than previous players were used to, and Terra was the forefront of this movement. Thanks to JP, global players already knew how amazing she was on her Crystal Awakening, and players gravitated to Terra like a bottled water in a hot desert. And for good reason. At this time, all you had to do was bring Terra, press any button, and watch the enemy melt down. Get it? <laughs> Alright, I'll stop. Moving on ahead, we get to the EX era, and Terra wasn't really touched here in a bad way, or in a positive way for that matter. With new magic damage dealing units around the corner such as Golbez and Renoa, and of course the global first being Beatrix, they could just do everything that Terra could do but more better and more efficient. Though Terra was still a solid option to have, however, the one drawback that I haven't mentioned before is that the game is now in its faster pace and that Terra would burn out her skills very fast. Her EX really didn't help with that either, as it was more used as an HP dump than really anything else, and it gave her a massive brave gain, which Terra truly didn't really need as she was already good with brave. I will say this though, for starting the movement of a faster paced DPS units, she lasted players quite a while, and rightfully so, as we were still getting used to what it meant to be in a faster environment in boss battles in Defo, and once players got used to it, they of course learned and adapted to other units to do this job better and with other units that didn't burn out quickly like Terra would. EX Plus is now on the rise, and of course Terra was marked for getting this amazing buff to her kit. On the release of Gal's event, Terra debuted with her new EX Plus and with it came some new mechanics on her kit called Esper's Blood, or Magicide, as I like to call it. This was an overhead buff you'll see on Terra from now onwards, as this buff will dictate throughout the fight on what her abilities will do. Meteor, when Magicide was at 5 or above, now did AoE Brave damage with 180% overflow, though after this, you'd lose 4 Magicide. 
Meltdown at 5 or above now did additional brave hits, but had 50% splash. So giving Terra some additional AoE power. Though like Meteor, you also lost 4 Magicide after using this ability. The entirety of what she got on EX Plus are as follows. Riot Blade would get 150% overflow and 50% splash damage. At 1 out of 3, this would unlock Terra's Brave Plus Plus and HP Plus Plus, also gave her a permanent stat boost of attack by 20% and her max spray by 40%. At 2 out of 3, this would slightly increase the recast speed for Riot Blade, and now Riot Blade grants Esper's blood to Terra and instantly grants her 9 stacks of it as well, that being the max, as allowing her to also start the fight at 5 stacks. At 3 out of 3, Riot Blade now did 8 Brave Hits and had 180% overflow, had a tremendous potency increase, and after its use would allow Terra to use dual cast instead of her HP++. So now as a Terra player, you would have to bounce between keeping this buff high for a massive attack, then using either her HP+, which would now change to a better dual cast, though it lasted one turn, it basically was your regular HP attack with Meteors executed twice. These were all good changes, nothing bad here at all, though at this time in the game, we already had the global first Aranea that completely curb stomps, obliterated, and annihilated any hope for other DPS units to be remotely good, magic or physical. And on the JP side, we had units like Kuja, the Emperor, and Ultimecia, all viable and great units that overshadowed Terra. It would be quite some time till we saw our Saber Trance Mage come back into the spotlight that she so rightfully deserves. Now we're moving on to Global's current era, and Terra had finally received all the love and care from our amazing dev team. Her bursts and LD weapons have been released, and players were extremely excited for this character to make a momentous return, and she came back blazing. The LD is so stacked with goodies that I won't mention everything, but if you want to read it for yourself, I left the link in the description box below to the Tom Berry Troops infographic. Feel free to check everything out there. I will say though that her LD finally gave her something up to this point was still one of her major drawbacks. She just would run out of steam way too fast. <laughs> but not anymore. Thanks to her LD, Terra now immediately gets 4 turns and grants her new buff, Loving Heart. Now Terra will have free skills, and best of all, her Magicite or Esper's Blood stacks will not be consumed at all, so you can literally blow everything away, and this is spammable. As I'm sure most global players already know, thanks to Cosmos Co-op, so if something didn't die in those four turns, well, just pop our LD again and do everything all over again. Just keep in mind that her EX buff can fall off during this window, which is annoying, but honestly, not much to worry about. Her burst attack now transforms Terra, as we all know her to do in Final Fantasy VI, and her burst effect now grants Brave back to the entire party based on the HP damage dealt. As you can see, this is all amazing for our girl Terra, and even when the game tries to pull her back, players still found a way to bring her, and global players, you'll see what I mean by this soon enough. As for what the future holds for Terra, well, the sky's the limit honestly with this unit. Her burst door is amazing, and her LD is honestly amazing. Everything she has to offer is amazing. For the JP side of things, only time will tell when she will be granted the burst plus, but we all know one thing for sure, is that when it does happen, get ready to MUDOYO! As always, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Tonberry Troop for their amazing infographics, as well as Rems Dissidia database, where a majority of today's information was found. I'd also like to thank my buddy Jamie and Soul DF. <laughs> I mean Soul 1305, as they helped shed some light on not just the community aspect, but gave insight to how the game was played during its beginning. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and as always, I'll see you next time.